All right, let's take a look at things. So I want to go over uh, a question a member had. So we have the outer edge trade uh, on. So, so the members have the SIM scalper in their hands. And we, we've been going over it in our training sessions. And then also uh, we released the file last week. Um, and then you guys have been going over that in the room on a daily basis. So we'll go over that in a second. I want to go over this software that specifically looks for specific setups like the uh, Slingshot Outer Edge where um, our zones have been tested uh, over the last 30 years to reverse price. Here's our red cell zone. Here's our green cell zone. So uh, these zones that are pre-programmed already for you called the Outer Edge Setup, you members have this software where you can specifically go into the software and put in uh, the software with the outer edge. You can have a slingshot or a failure trade specifically. Okay. You can, I had a member ask me this because they've been running this and having great success uh, with it. Uh, can you use this Rinko size that we use in the room? on our smaller Renko size that I show in the room right here. Can we use this on outer edge setups? The answer is yes. Um, over the last 60 days, it's just under 90% uh, accuracy um, by getting to the outer edge and reversing. And you can put what targets you want in. Uh, stops, uh, obviously, um, from this standpoint was a, uh, you, from what a lot of users has been using this as a uh, as a reversal technique is a 30 tick stop is what they've been using um, on a big reversal like this. Uh, so what this is is an outer edge setup. Here's the trades that happened yesterday. It's specifically what it's doing is, and you can adjust your stop down lower if you want uh, your target to uh, adjust your targets. But what it's doing is, since our outer edge settings have been tested over the last 30 years to reverse price, everybody knows my specific setting that I like. It's actually in your software. So it likes reverse price. So once it gets into the outer edge of this price and gets a reversal, you tend to get a nice move in that direction. So this is the S&P yesterday. So I just want to answer, uh, since... We do have some members that actually have been bringing this to my attention. Um, you can use that on that smaller Renko size, on the smallest Renko size that we go over um, in the room. And I'll go over that with you um, in a second for members in the room. We'll go over the Renko size um, specifically. But you can use this by getting to the outer edge, letting it reverse, and then seeing a continuation. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's done very well. Obviously, past performance is not indicative of future results, but just under 90% the last 60 days on these reversals using that smaller Renko size. That's specifically looking for a failure trade and a slingshot specifically. No zone breaks. This is when the market gets stretched on our outer edge, and then you see reversals. So you guys can set that up if you want. I'll go over that in a second. Uh, for you members on specifically looking at what Renko size that traders have been using, and we'll go over that in a second. Um, what I have in the room, uh, I made it larger. Um, a lot of members have been emailing me about making this larger in the room. Uh, this is our this is our um, our Sim Renko chart, right? So Sim Renko chart. This is our smallest rent Sim Renko chart on the ES that we educate with. Um, I'll go over the settings here in a second for you members again uh, in the room. But this specifically is we're looking for these zone breaks. We're looking for zone breaks. Um, I had another question by a member saying, hey, I've been seeing a lot of these setups happen uh, Eastern Standard Time um, after the market opens back up at 6 p.m. Yes, this works 23 out of 24 hours a day. There's no specific time period where these need to fire off. Like the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow had beautiful trades yesterday. I had some big uh, runners uh, last night again. So this this is not where you have to trade it at 
from a specific time period of only 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Uh, this works around the clock. So there, there's two ways you can use this, uh, the SIM scalper. Uh, you can use it, like I said yesterday, let me recap. You can use it as a standalone indicator. Or you can use it as an automation, uh, a um, automated trader, automated strategy. So, if you use it as a standalone indicator, what I put three there. Hold on one sec. If you use it as a standalone indicator, any time a yellow bar fires off, you have a setup whether it be a liquidity grab or non-liquidity grab. Anytime this yellow candle fires off or this yellow candle fires off here or here, you have a possible break into new territory where if you have a sell setup where it's a you're red and you get a sell setup, you're trying to feed off the sell stops below because new territory. And if a yellow bar comes up, you're trying to feed off the buy stops from the counter trend traders or the wrongly positioned traders. So that's essentially what the zone break does. It feeds off order flow. So if this is a critical level, which it is, this is a critical low. That's why this fired off. This was a critical low in the market at this low. That's a critical low. So as soon as that yellow candle fires, that is a setup with or without a liquidity grab. Now what you can do, so that can be a standalone indicator. Okay. You can use it as a strategy also. Now you want to use this strategy, you plot it. You can use it as a strategy also if you want to elect to do that with the SIM scalper. I have them turned off because every trader has different targets and stops in the room, but it does fire this in the room for you on the S&P. So the difference as a standalone indicator from this setup to this setup is a liquidity grab. Now, typically what will happen with price action, you'll see a liquidity grab first, and then you'll want to see a Rinko bar happen right afterwards. Occasionally, what you'll see is you'll see them try to grab liquidity right after a zone breakout. They'll break out a zone, they'll bring it back down to catch all the counter trend traders in a new territory, then bring it higher. So this does happen on a rare occasion where you get a zone breakout, then liquidity grab, but the majority of trades will happen where you have a deep liquidity grab, then the then the zone breakout. It happens a lot on the NASDAQ futures during the day. My goodness gracious. I'll go over that in a second. So when you see these yellow, yellow, yellow bars come up, candles, these are all trade setups. These are all trade setups right here. But what you can do, you can cherry pick the ones with liquidity grabs. So when you get liquidity grabs, what it's doing is you're telling yourself, that they just caught all the wrongly positioned traders. So this is what a, what is called a liquidity grab. Get this off here. A liquidity grab is where we are red. We're red candles. An intra bar is going to turn green as it's ticking. Green, 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 tick, 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 and then all of a sudden close red again. When it closes red and you get a yellow candle that forms immediately afterwards, you have a a high probability trade. Because what, what's happening is, is they just took all the counter trend traders out of the market and grabbed liquidity right here. They're grabbing liquidity because these algorithms can't just short 50 contracts at a time, 100 contracts, 200 contracts, 300 contracts. It's going to manipulate the market. So what they do is they always like to reverse price against trend and grab liquidity to ultimately bring it lower. So when you see this combination come together, you can literally put all these markets together on the same Renko size, the Dow, the NASDAQ, crude oil, S&P, and just cherry pick trades with liquidity grabs by itself. 
with a zone break, with a combination. Because it's telling you that right here, they just took all the counter trend traders out of the market, the majority of them, to grab liquidity because they want to bring it lower. This is the ultimate indicator, if you want to use it as the SIM scalper as an indicator. The opposite will be on buys. You'll want to see grab liquidity on buy setups. So when you're doing buy setups, you want to see a dip on the price action below. But just because you don't have liquidity doesn't mean these are not setups because they are part of the SIM scalper system. They are part of the setups. But when you're doing this, as you can see these come up, you want to see the deep liquidity grabs like this. If you see a deep liquidity grab like this and then a yellow bar comes up, heads up, they're trying to mark the market up. Okay, they're trying to mark the market up or they're trying to mark the market down. Okay, so when you see that, like today, this only had two setups today. Well, this is where the run, this is where the run started right here. They grabbed all this liquidity all that liquidity they wiped out all those counter trend traders wiped them all out between 32 and three quarters to 28 they took all that liquidity in wiped them all out caught all the rolling position traders and then they brought it higher all right the same thing is in all these markets so when you do these trade setups, this is the NASDAQ future. NASDAQ futures had a great morning this morning already off this Renko size. I'll go over this with you members in a second. I double the size on the NASDAQ futures. Look how the market takes off when you get the combo. The combo is the key to catching liquidity grabs. And they can even be small liquidity grabs, but you notice every one was liquidity grab. This one, this one, this one this one they're all liquidity grabs this started out at four o'clock this morning or 443 this morning right I like to see them right afterwards and then you get going I just had a break even plus one on that one but here's a sell this morning at three o'clock this morning liquidity grab liquidity again so you can tell what they try to do when you get the deep ones, those are the best. But each one of these this morning, that is qualified. That's qualified. You get a lot of them on the NASDAQ futures. NASDAQ futures had a great day trading yesterday. Okay, so, you know, and it doesn't matter. The Dow had a great day yesterday also. The auto strategy on the Dow had a great trading day also. But you'll notice on the Dow also the same thing. Is you can cherry pick your trades on the Dow with the specific grabs. It all started off with this one, as far as that goes. So we can use this knowledge to understand what they're doing. They're grabbing liquidity. They're trying to drive it north or south in the market. Okay. So we can use that then as a indicator standalone indicator when these fire off or we can use it as an automated strategy okay so either either one you can use so as you see these yellow candles come up they're coming up for a reason they just don't fire up uh, I, I have a programmed because they're, they're they're coming into a new territory so this one fired off because of this transition from here. Where was it? Right there. This transition. This is the original breakdown. So what it'll do, it'll find when the market's transitioning back up and get you back into the zone break to the upside. That's programmed for the transition to get back to a zone break to the upside, which it caught that move up to the upside from 35 and a half, and she's rallied up to 42 so far. So we can use it as a standalone indicator or an automated strategy. You know, the NASDAQ futures, like I said, 
this started the big one this morning here just a second ago at 8.30, 8.36. Look at that deep liquidity right into a zone break into new territory. So you can see that what they're trying to do, they're trying to grab it, and they're just trying to accelerate price. Grab it and then accelerate. Accelerate price to the new level. You know, and like I said, it doesn't matter what you look at. Gold's the same way. So gold yesterday and going into today, look at the combination you're getting. Liquidity grab, zone break. Liquidity grab, zone break. Right at the next candle. Liquidity grab, zone break. Now see the zone the liquidity grab happened right after the zone break, which I still like those. They don't come up very often. Because you're not getting in with a zone break until you get a liquidity grab if you're using it as an indicator. What happens if you have a what if you have a zone break and then the liquidity grab? Let's say you're waiting for let's say you're specifically waiting for a liquidity grab zone break combination. It does happen this way once in a while, very rare, but if that tells you price usually tanks or goes higher relatively quickly as far as that goes but in today's trading same thing you're looking for the same type of price action you get a lot of setups so you can literally set these charts up beside each other if you want to look at multiple markets and you want to use this as an indicator you can put the Dow up right next to the S&P. Right, and you can wait for these zones to break into new territory. You can put the NASDAQ up right next to it. I mean, you, could, you can stalk a lot of different markets at the same time. You can stalk several markets at the same time just by looking for liquidity grabs liquidity grabs with the overall zone breaks okay but to reiterate like I said you can use that outer edge setup also on my specific wrinkle bar I'll go over that in one second but two nice trades yesterday off of it. They don't come up very often. But like I said, this setup by itself was batting over, what, last 60 days, just under 90% on the outer edge setup using this specific Rinko setting. You can use this outer edge setup specifically by itself with this.